All right. Let's go ahead and pray first and let me share the screen. How about I do that first? We'll get into a blessing and then we'll get into some conversation and then some reading. We get our assignment. So in the spirit of prayer, hallelujah, hallelujah, and hallelujah. Baruch atah ya Eloheinu melech haolam asher notan lanu Mashiach Yeshua vahadevarot shel habarit chadasha Baruch atah Yahuwa noten habarit hachadasha Amen. So blessed are you, Yah El, King of the Universe, who gave to us the Messiah Yeshua and the commandments of the new covenant. Blessed are you, Yah, giver of the new covenant. Amen. And so we ended up reading James three. Oh, wow. As someone who went to the location. Because we ended up doing it <laughs> online. Dang. And so. Mm, mm, mm. You said someone is at the location where you've been doing it at? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So we ended up doing it online. Shoot. We are all online now. And so I had talked with one of the brothers about doing it online because he was like, we're going to do it at this, this place. I'm like, it's probably more convenient to do it at home. He agreed. And I just didn't send it out. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, we had talked about last week on how we were going to be speaking about the blessings, uh, speaking blessings. Um, we were talking about how to... Um, also, be more responsive to the spirit and obedient to the spirit. And then we also talked about how, <clears throat> you know, we would just um, walk more in love, right? So those are the three things that we were working on. And so... In reflection for me, I did, you know, I haven't really been keeping a journal like I did the first week. I need to really get back to that. The first week I was really good at keeping a journal and documenting the days. But uh, the past couple of weeks, I haven't really done it. But just reflecting on this past week. Um, you know, the key is to just be consistent. And I'm learning that I need to really more so be consistent in focus being mindful you know being um re recollective of what it is that i'm supposed to focus on because when we lose our focus you know we completely get caught up in the flesh as opposed to walking in the spirit mm -hmm. walking according to the word and so that was my challenge for you know this past week is really just staying mindful and being you know recollective of what it is that I'm supposed to be doing. Um, it wasn't like a horrible week, but it was just like a week that was just like, you know, I had some challenges that I faced mm -hmm. and um, dealt with some uh, some personal matters that are really just at times challenging. And that's when it's really time to buckle down is when we're dealing with those challenges, and those personal matters that we have to really outgrow and become rooted in, in terms of the spirit so that those issues don't just, you know, sidetrack you and distract you from what it is okay. we're supposed to be doing. So I could say for just overall, I would give myself like a seven, seven out of 10 for the week, you know? Yeah, it was, uh, I've been trying to be reflective myself, but, uh, you know, about com my complaining to stop mm -hmm. complaining 
and uh, I guess more so from the our lessons on the Shabbat um, about uh, 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 the complaining and for the lesson last week about your, you know, running your mouth. Sometimes my mouth can overrun us. Mm. And um, it's uh, been kind of really uh, eye-opening because um, and to to understand that uh, y'all do sometimes he say no and uh, just watch and try to watch my mouth and because uh, mm. it, it can go it can get away with me sometimes yes ma'am and uh, I don't know. I don't have a number yet to give myself, but just being reflective and trying to really uh, do do better. I get it, hundred percent, hundred percent. That is the goal. Improvement, you know, and that's that's one thing we got to be, you know intentional with I'm about to share this online to somebody. Let's see. Even if it's supported in your browser. What are you talking about? Really? All right. Let's see if I can join. And then we will get to the reading. But yeah, those are crucial, Ima. That's so crucial. You know, you never, but you, you know, you just recording in progress. <laughs> It's real easy to uh, get off into uh, uh, certain things that in our life with our mouth and the things that we do because of, you know, it, it, life ain't easy. Mm -hmm. And they have certain situations and circumstances come up on you and you'd be like, wait a minute. And you mm -hmm. do want to maybe uh, complain about them. You want to uh, but uh, it's about really trusting Yah to uh, see you through. And uh, my mother used to tell me all the time, and sometimes I forget, you know, if you can't do something about something, leave it alone. Mm. Let, let the Father do it, you know. And, and, oh. and, and you know, we just worry, and, and, and it's a, a you know, that sense just to, to what, what are you worried about? What can, if you, it, it like, say, for instance, something happened on the, uh, on the sixth day, and you know, you can't do nothing about it until the second day. Mm -hmm. What's wrong with you mm -hmm. that you got to spend your, the next two days? Uh, going crazy when you can't wow. do nothing about it. No way. Wow. You, can't do mm -hmm. you know, it's better to take that time to reflect uh, and, and, you know, maybe uh, get still mm -hmm. and and see what y'all can, you know, give to you. Because it's a lot of times when we get still and let y'all do it, you know, the, the answers come. But when we stress about it, I do wow. not. Wow. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that worry is not faith. That's that doubt, you know, and it's like it says in um Romans, I think what chapter is that? 12 or 13. Everything that we do in doubt is sin. You know what I mean? So like we yeah. gotta start removing that doubt, you know, and that's it's so easy to doubt. You know what I mean? Like oh, that's yes, something that we just slip into and not really work to overcome our doubts, you know. Um and that overcoming is 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 a daily thing, you know, because once you you know overcome it the one time, it's gonna come right back, you know. You gotta have to master it again. And that's the thing about mastery, it's an everyday thing. Like people think yes, 
that, you know, being saved is a one-time thing. No, being saved is a continuous lifestyle choice. You know, being delivered from whatever it is that had us in bondage, whatever it is that was adversarial to life that we did in our life, that's what we're delivered from, you know, and that's a choice that you have to make every day. Every day. You know, uh, we, we have know to make. How, we don't know how to subdue the flood. It's that we have to subdue. Mm. You have to subdue the flood. It has to be, uh, uh, it, it has to be uh, pruned. It has to, you know, sometimes you got to cut stuff off uh, in order to, uh, uh, you know, to get through, sometimes just get through the day. You know, and if the flesh want to act up and get ugly and, and and raise up, but you know, we really do have to subdue the flesh. Every and day. Yah shows us that through how we do the earth, we we got to break up that ground. We got to break it up. We got to break up that mess. We got to make sure though that the words of the Father uh, are planted deep down in our hearts. And and in our mind that uh, we can be overcome. It's, it's you know, and I I think that's that's something that's is 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 hard when um uh Yah let uh, Yah sure let us know, you know, we got to be overcomers. You have to overcome this life. You got to overcome this hmm. mess and stuff out here. You got to be an overcomer. And it's not that it's not because he says I have overcome. I have overcome. I have overcome. Mm -hmm. So if he did it, he's not doing something that you cannot do because he hundred percent, a hundred percent, Iman. That's what people really don't capture. That's so important to know and understand. That is vital. Help us, yeah. Yes, ma'am. Help us, Abel. And so. I think this chapter here <laughs> is really vital um, because it, it's another practical chapter on how to go about achieving self-mastery. Mm -hmm. Like when you really read <laughs> the letter of James, you're really dealing with a treatise on how to become self-mastered. Like that's the thrust of the book. And that's becoming messianic. And that's what Yahushua did. Yahushua attained his messianic consciousness in the anointing because he mastered himself. And that's all we're talking about. Mindfulness, recollecting and remembering things. And you know what I'm saying? Having that control over what we need to control, you know? And that's self-mastery. And so this is what we're dealing with. We're really looking to... Submit yeah, us to subduing the flesh, right? That's mastery, Ima. It's deep. It's deep. This chapter, truth, it is. It certainly is deep because it certainly asks us some, some questions that you really need to ask yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really a uh, reflection on yourself. Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Yeah. Where do why are you doing? From? You know, why are you doing this? Wow. Wow. You know, it's interesting. Mm. And just thinking about how communication is so crucial for connection, right? Sometimes I believe as human beings, looking at us as, as you know, um, in a relational sense, how we can relate to one another in so many ways, we don't communicate with ourselves a lot. Mm -mm. We don't take the time to really get to know ourselves and, 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 and see what's really going on, who we really are. You know, having that conversation with ourselves is challenging. And I think that lends even more to not having that communication with others because you don't know really who you are and just presenting that notion, you know, and I think even if it is the case when we know we're afraid of who we are at times. Right, we don't mind lying to our own self, you know. Ooh, -wee. <laughs> I hated myself when I did that, Ima. 
Oh, uh, that's why you know what? That's why I came off like when I got offline for a while. I remember a few years I stopped coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ima, I was I was living a lie. Ima. I was like, this is not good. Like this is really bad, and I was just miserable. You know, get a mess. Oh my goodness, we can justify and 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 reason our ways through the most ignorant stuff. And just think that it's all good, knowing it's not. And it's like, man, I had I had to really check myself those few years when I was just like, I was just, I was checked out. I was checked out. Um, but that's yeah, that mastery yeah, is everything. When we set up and, and tell our own self, you know, you can, you know, you shouldn't lie to yourself, but that's the first person we use lie to is our own self. Every time. So, I mean, we'd be like, oh my goodness. But you you know, um <laughs> the replay was a uh a song years ago uh -huh. uh about uh uh the man and I think uh, what's that one of them pop singers uh Michael, Michael Jackson, Jackson the man in the mirror the man in the mirror mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. That yeah. reflection. Who you lying to? Right. You know, and you me, think about it. What's that other nursery rhyme? She said, Mill, Mill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who said them all? Yeah. As a kid, because she thought she was the best thing going. You know, wow. Lying like <laughs> wow, wow, wow. And you know, you find yourself, you catch yourself too. Like, did I really just say that? I don't believe I just said that. But then you already said it, so now you got to stick to it because it done came out the oh, wrong way. Oh, and now you're like, damn. <laughs> 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 oh, we a mess at times. We are a mess. Clean us up, Baba, and that's what this is all about. You know, that's why we're doing this to be to be clean. You know, those who expect Yahushua to return. Will cleanse himself as he is clean, you know. I think first John may be the next book we go through. That may be the next book we go through. That first John. That first John, Ima. Yeah, first John. And I the first you, we're, John. The first John. The, 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 looking at John 3. It ain't no joke either. Oh, John 3 is thick. <laughs> Cause John, it was John the Baptist who really put John 3 in a perspective. He like. Man, he filleted the fish. <laughs> he, <laughs> he filleted the fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He filleted the fish. But let's jump into this, John, James 4, and then we'll uh, just have some assignments and conversation. So James writes, where do fightings and strivings come from among you? Do they not come from your pleasures that battle in your members? you desire and do not have. You murder and are jealous and are unable to obtain. You strive and fight and you do not possess because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask evilly in order to spend it on your pleasures. Adulterers and adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with Elohim? Whoever therefore intends to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of Elohim. My oh, goodness. Yeah. Or do you not think that the scriptures speak to no purpose? Does the spirit which dwells in us intensely crave unto envy? But he gives greater favor. Because of this, he says, Elohim resists the proud, but gives favor to the humble. Ooh, that's one of the assignments this week, Ima, to remain humble. Humble. <laughs> Ooh, we. So then, subject yourselves to Elohim. Resist the devil, and he shall flee from you. Draw near to Elohim, and he shall draw near to you. Ooh, we. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Oh, Cleanse yeah. hands, sinners. Cleanse hands, sinners, and cleanse the heart, you double-minded. Lament 
and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to dejection. Humble yourselves in the sight of the master and he shall lift you up. Brothers, do not speak against one another. He that speaks against the brother and judges his brother speaks against Torah and judges Torah. And if you judge Torah, you are not a doer of Torah, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy. Who are you to judge another? Come now, you who say, today or tomorrow, let us go to such and such a city, spend a year there, and trade and make profit, when you do not know of tomorrow. For what is your life? For it is a vapor that appears for a little and then disappears. Instead of saying, if, you're, if the master desires, instead of your saying, if the, the, if the master desires, we shall live and do this or that. But now you boast in your proud speeches and all such boasting is wicked. To him then who knows to do good and does not do it, to him it is sin. I need one moment, Ima. Sleek, give me one moment. I'll be right back. We're going to get right into this. Sleek, no problem. No problem. Yes, ma'am. Indeed. Let's pray, Ima. We're going to pray and we're going to get this going because this chapter here, my goodness, hallelujah. Right. Right. Father, our King, Yah, Elohim of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, to you belongs our praises, esteem, and honor, Heavenly Father. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your forgiveness, Heavenly Father. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your patience and long suffering. We thank you for the opportunity to fellowship for even when you say two or more gathered in your name, you said you will be in our midst. So we invite you to be with us, Heavenly Father. Help us to understand your scripture so that we may apply it to our life and bring forth the fruits that you have planted within us, Heavenly Father, for you have placed within us eternity. And you've made all things beautiful and good in their time, Heavenly Father. So help us to return to you wholeheartedly so we may experience the life and the blessings that you have promised to our fathers and our mothers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, as we pray these and all things in the name of our high priest, Messiah, Yahushua, blessed be his name. Hallelujah. Amen. Goodness gracious. Pleasures that battle in your members, in your flesh. You know, it makes me think of like Pringles, right? think of like pringles you know the saying of pringles once you pop <laughs> you can't stop okay. okay so the flesh is like that once you get your first taste of apple pie and you've like you fell in love with apple pie guess what you're gonna want you're gonna want apple pie yeah right we crave this, this is you know i i'm looking and i'm thinking about um uh, this verse uh out of all the verses in this script, the verse eight, mm -hmm. uh, and it reminded me of the fact that 
uh, Yah is is our husk. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. fact that you cannot have him and the world, that makes you an adulteress. That makes you an adulteress. When you want part of him, but you also want to keep your foot over in the world too. Golly, mom. Make it that's plain. Your husk. Make it plain. You know, you, that's something that you got. You you can't, you know, and it, it just it you know, it kind of reminds me of that scripture, Hosea. You cannot hear your husband. Mm. How is it that you can take yourself out and you say you love him, but then you sneaking around like he can't see? And 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 you doing the things of the world. You may be gambling. You may be actually committing adultery with somebody else. You might be doing a whole lot of things that you know that that your husband that you supposed to love would not want you to do. You are a wife. You are a safe wife, and you supposed to act in a certain way but here you go and knowing that your your husband according to what we even read on the Shabbat your husband is a consuming fire and he hmm. jealous of, he would do anything for his wife mm -hmm. anything anything at all for his wife and including tearing somebody else up for messing with his wife. Mm -hmm. And here you go sneaking in through a back door somewhere. Mm -hmm. Trying to do your own thing with your double man to sit. Wow. I tell you. This wow. Is something, this is something else. Wow. 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 You know, faithfulness is so undervalued and misunderstood. We really don't understand the concept of faith. Mm. I was talking with this brother. And he's like, you know, we have it as a as an intellectual, like, uh, I forgot what he called it. It's just like an acknowledgement. Like to believe is just to have a, 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 a mental conception mm. what's the follow through though yeah. right what's yeah. the substance of faith mm. what's the evidence of it you know what I'm saying like yeah. where is it established how do we establish our faith you know and to bring it home with that allegory of, 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 a, of a husband and a wife it paints a picture so clear. You know what I'm saying? And that's why he yeah. makes it so yeah. relational to us to understand the nature of the relationship. Like that is powerful. And that's verse four. You know, Yah is an exclusivist. And this is what people really don't want to deal with. Yah is a separatist. Y'all calls people to be set apart. Yeah. Because y'all are set apart. What's, this, what's the, the separation? Righteousness from wickedness, light from dark, heaven from earth, right? Life from death. Set apartness, holiness from defilement. But do we know what those things are? And that's what we have to really start getting back to, to understand yeah. What Yah esteems to be those things, not just what we feel in our heart, not just what we think, not just what we believe, what we know Yah's standard is. What is Yah's standard? And that's where we fall off is when we're trying to do our own standard, we leaning on our own understanding. That's where we trip. Wow. That's where we trip. We got to make sure that Yah's words are ordering. Our steps. Hallelujah. 
That's rich. But that that choice, Ima, that friendship with the world is an enmity with Elohim. Yes, it is. So what does that look like? How, what does that mean? What choices do we have to make in that? They give some citations. Matthew 13, 22. Luke 4, 5, and 6. Let me go see what this is about. 13, that's the parable of the sower. Matthew 13 is... Matthew 13. Uh-huh. 22. Wow. It says, that sown among the thorns is he who hears the word, and the worry of this age, and the deceit of riches choke the word, and it becomes fruitless. Mm. It's like we completely exchange the world for Yah. We say, give us the world, you can keep Yah. So people who completely abandon their faith, you know, in chasing the illusions of this world. Yeah. And not keeping faith in Yah, despite the circumstance that you may be in. The circumstance you're in is to teach you the lesson of how Yah will bless you if you yeah, remain I, faithful. I, I see, I see that it talks, you know, even about it says the anxiety of the age, the deceitfulness of rich mm. utterly chokes the word out. Utterly. <laughs> it is. It becomes unfruitful. What can it work? What can it do for you if it choke it out? Mm. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. It also said Luke 4 verses 5 and 6. Luke 4. Mm. Wow. Wow. I drank a whole bunch of water today. My, you have to beg my part. I beg your pardon. Excuse me, please. Do what you have to do. <laughs> We, we, we. So Luke 4, 5 and 6 says, And the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the reins of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I shall give you and their esteem, for it has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. I'm going to keep on. If then you worship before me, also be yours. And Yehoshua answering said, Get behind me, Satan, for it has been written, you shall worship Yah, your Elohim, and him only shall you serve. Hallelujah. Mm. 
That's rich. And there was one more. Romans. But oh, this nothing. offer is all uh, this offer comes into every one of us at some point in all of our lives. Mm. We always we can all say we've had this offer. Wow. Yeah. What yeah. but what is our answer? But y'all y'all sure said man should not live by bread, but by every word. You know, mm -hmm. but we get this offer and, you know, sometimes our eyes get big. Sometimes mm -hmm. need more tell us we need to take this offer. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not trusting y'all enough to, 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 to get us over the hump or take us to the next level. And uh, we accept these things, but we accept them, uh, accept them to our hurt. Right. Definitely yep. to her. Knowing already this 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 man is judge. He had no uh uh so uh, you know nothing here. How are you gonna offer something that don't even really belong to you? Hmm. You might been here, but it didn't belong to you to even offer it. But that's not what he hmm. does. He offered these things. We all at some point in our life get to offer. And hmm. what is our but what is our answer? Right. And how do we respond? You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. you can give an answer, but are you standing on it? Do you believe it? You know what I'm saying? Are you rooted yeah. in that particular response? Because, you know, that's determined. The spirit in which we speak, it determines on how it's established. Like, we can say something. But it even says here, you ask evilly, Right. Where did it say that in James? You know, you I ask and do not receive because you ask we evilly, right? That. Yes, ma'am. But even still, we have to stand on it, right? We have to stand on That's what we piece. say. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. You know, our, our faithfulness is de demonstrated by, you know, the affirmation of our faith, how we affirm it, not just in word, but in action. Like if we say that, we can't go near anything that Satan is offering us. If we say, get behind me, Satan, you shall serve Yah and him alone shall you worship. You know what I'm saying? Nothing that Satan offers us should even like get into our field of view. Because we're that circumspect, we're that aware of the wiles, right? They call them the wiles and the mysteries and the depths of mm -hmm. Satan. Right. And we have to be able to rebuke those and resist those. It tells us in verse seven, resist the devil. But we entertain the devil in so many ways. We bring on that duality. Let's look up what this word is here. In the Hebrew. That's verse seven. Verse seven. This is so important. All right. Lachin hachana'u. La Elohim, right? That is, again, subject yourselves to Elohim, right? La Chen Ha Chen Ahu La Elohim. Ha Titzvu Nagid Ha Satan. So this is Satan here. Va Yi Barach Ma Penechim. Ma Penechim. So resist the devil, and he shall flee. Right? But this Satan, let's look up what that word means. So this is really just a word that means adversary, of course, 7853. This is going to be good. If this is in here, oh my goodness. 7854. Give me one second. Control F. It's a hard script to go 
to a, a, a hard verse for people to really understand, all right. Okay. In so, what sense? Okay. Uh, when it tell you, be subject therefore to Yah, but that but uh, kind of throw you off. Withstand the devil, and he will flee from you. Your your strategy is to stand with Yah. This, that's the you key. Know, hold on. That's 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 that that and and, and when, when you withstand the devil and hold on and you become subject, this you know, think going back and thinking about what Yahshua said when he was a child. He it said the scripture say he was he became subject to his parents. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's to be subject to Yah. Is to, is to be obedient. That's what it meant, but a lot of people don't see it in this scripture. In this That's verse. real. Right, because once you're obedient to Yah, you naturally resist the devil. It's a natural he response. He has no other choice but to uh, to flee, because that's that's the strategy to, to mm -hmm. withstand him, is to be subject and holding on to be obedient to Yah. And this That's is that you know Yahshua showed us what to do. Man mm -hmm. shall not live by bread alone. He didn't use his words. Right. But he said by, by every word. You know, they can't they go together, but people don't always put those together. But by every right. word that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yah. Mm. Mm. Not some, but by every, every word. word. Not mine, but right. Yah's word. That's that's your strategy to get him out your face. And we've been dealing with this. Like, where do you most expressly find Yah's word? Like, what text, what literal text gives the revelation of Yah's word? So that you can start to hear Yah's voice. Once you understand Yah's word, then you can hear his voice, right? Yeah. But how do you get to definitively know the word of Yah? What provides us with that clarity? First of all, Maura, you can't do this with unless you study his word. There you go. You really can't. The Torah, right? You have to have the Torah. <laughs> you have to have his word. You you know, I, I don't I, I I I don't I didn't see it before, but I've seen it now since I've been studying the mm -hmm. the lessons that mm -hmm. uh are taught to Yah's people. No matter what, I mean, you know, I I could just say uh, Moshe is one of the greatest teachers. <laughs> Great teacher. That's it. That's it. <laughs> he was. He he teaches the word, and and I saw how he uh how when he, when he was talking this this uh, uh to the uh to the the youngsters. I'm gonna call them the youngsters. Mm -hmm. He knew how to talk with them, not to allow them to fear, but to uplift them still. You know, it was how he was able to talk to them wasn't, uh, you know, some of the things he was talking to them about, uh, he didn't tell him, them everything. But right. he, you know, he, he, he talked to them. But this is the same thing, but this is why, yeah, sure, you cannot find in this in this scripture, when Yahshua is talking, how he uh, uh, talks about the the things from Moshe, he talks about the things that Moshe talks about, and you know, and to, to, to say this and for this particular verse here, that to, to become subject, you know, I would not have put it together. It said he became subject. And, and when you say he becomes subject to his parents, what what do that mean? Obedient, obedient, obedient. Like we're supposed to be subject to Yah, that causes the, the devil to flee to by by mm -hmm. our obedience. But a, a lot of people miss this scripture. They miss it because they don't understand that um, that but. When it, it has that in that in that scripture, 
withstand the devil and he will flee from you. Well, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. But you can't know that unless you go back and kind of see it and how it was through the talk. Yes, ma'am. And how you uh, see the things that uh, that Yahshua was saying. He didn't go away from his teaching of what uh, of what the, the prophets would talk. That's all he did. He didn't come in his own set. Boy, ooh, hallelujah. Mm. Hmm. Yep. And that's, you know, verse two is so interesting because he completely nullified his will for the will of Yah. Right. That's yeah. that humility that he's asking for us to implement into our lives. And that's the offering. That's the quote unquote, the sacrifice that we're called to make. Not my will be done, Alpha, but your will be done. Hallelujah. Right. And that's the biggest thing. Shift in desire because verse two talks about this. You know, we're, we're, we're fighting and striving because our desires are off. We're not doing things for the sake of heaven and the kingdom and for Yah. And we're doing things you, for the right, sake of self. Yeah, that's what when you were talking about when it, 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 it when you did the third verse, it said you ask and do not receive because you ask evil. Because you know, have you ever? Uh, I think it's in the 58th chapter of Isaiah when it mm. talks about uh, fasting. Yep. Said you fast for strife and debate. You wow. fast because you you want to fast because you want to knock somebody up. I want them to fall into a hole, so I'm going to fast on them today. That's, That's your full. evilness. My, my, my. Like you, said, you fight for, you, you fast for strife. You want to do the things of the king. But you do them evilly. Mm. You don't do them the way they're supposed to be done. Right. You're evil in, in your thinking. And you don't do them in righteousness. You're doing them mm. evilly. You know, and I think and I have seen people over and up. You you want to fast. Well, I'm I'm gonna get that so and so. I'm gonna fast. I'm gonna fast a whole week. Sure. So I can get them. What's wrong with you? You, you know what I think it is? And the problem is because we want to be right. We'd rather be <laughs> right than righteous. You see what I'm saying? Oh, hallelujah. And like, if we just want to prove that we're right in that sense and not being righteous in the uh uh in the in the journey to to demonstrate that the truth is the truth, hmm. the truth is only as valid as you know, it's manifest in our life. Hallelujah. That's how the truth functions. It has to be like, <laughs> basically like faith, evidence. That's what faith's definition is, in fact. It is, you know, evidence. And so that's uh, imperative. That's imperative. That is imperative. Um, so we're going to look at this, you know, what we're going to do this week. First thing is make sure that our will is aligned with Yah. Okay. So any and everything we do, we're seeking out the will of Yah first and foremost. So let's make sure that we're dedicated to, to, to understanding, to get the counsel of the spirit. To fulfill the will of Yah. Yeah. Okay. And that really is almost part of the, the second one as well. They're all going together. Humility. Let's practice humility this week. Let's make sure that we, and let's look up what this word humble means. Because they say Moshe was the most humble man. Yes, yeah, he was. Right. So let's see what this word humble means in Hebrew. Okay. Anah. Interesting. The eye of the fish of the prophet in the spirit. To be occupied with, to be busy with, to afflict, oppress, humble, 
to be afflicted, to be bowed down. So, the number is this, 6031. The idea of looking down or brow beating to the press, literally or figuratively, transitive or intransitive, to a base self, affliction, to afflict self, the answer to chasten self. And this is where you're dealing with it, to chasten, to discipline yourself, right? To deal hardly with, to defile, to they say, to exercise, to force. Gentleness, to be humble, right? To hurt, to ravish, to sing, to speak, to submit self. This is where we're getting into it, right? So we're looking at chastening self, being disciplined, to exercise, to be gentle, to be humble, and to submit yourself to the will of Yah. So that's that's the other part, you know, submitting ourselves to the will of Yah. So we're looking to seek out the will of Yah, to do the will of Yah this week, to be humble. Hmm. Let's see. Let's resist the devil this week as much as we possibly can. That's the third one I was thinking about. Okay. Right? Because when we submit ourselves to Yah, right, and we put the will of Yah before us, that's submission, right? That's drawing near to Elohim. So this is really about Romans 12, 1 and 2. So when we're talking about doing the will of Yah, when we're talking about submitting ourselves to Yah, drawing near to Elohim, they're all pretty much in principle the same thing. And that can be summed up. You said Romans, Romans what? 12. And 2. Really 1 and 2. Romans 1 and 2. Romans 12. Oh, 12, 1 and 2. I call upon you, therefore, brothers, sisters, through the compassion of Elohim, to present your bodies a living offering, set apart, well-pleasing to Elohim, your reasonable worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you prove what is that good and well-pleasing and perfect desire of Elohim. So again, we're focusing on this idea of desire, right? Where do these fightings and strivings, this duality, where does this duality come from in us? Because anytime you're dealing with fightings and strivings, you're dealing with duality. You're dealing with division or what we know as divisiveness. That's division. That's duality, right? There's no unification there. There's no symmetry, right? There's no wholeness there. And so that is where contentions come from. There's discord. There's disagreement. But they come because the battles in the members for pleasure in our flesh. And so we orient ourselves. Verse of the day today was, and I, I didn't post it in uh, the WhatsApp group, I beg your pardon. But it would seek first the kingdom of Elohim and all its righteousness. So all things can be added unto us. Right? Seek first the reign of Elohim and his righteousness, and all these shall be added to you. And so making ourselves subject to Elohim in his kingdom. Right? The word. You were just talking, we were just talking about that, right? How do we know to subject ourselves to Yah by yeah. his word, according to his word? Yeah. There are instructions. <laughs> you know, we have to know how to present the offering properly. And we are the offering. How do we present ourselves to Yah properly? According okay. to his word. Say again, Iman? I just said, Yah help us. That's all. Amen. 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 Shalom Aleikum Akotikwa. So we're dealing with James 4 and looking to apply some things to our life for this week. We have discussed how we're going to be putting the will of Yah first before us in all that we do. 
we talked about how we uh, submit ourselves. Well, that's the correct part. Actually resisting the devil, right? And then walking in humility. So those are the three things we're going to really work on. And I didn't even get to finish looking up humility. Um, let's see if it's in this here. Nope. I don't know. Moshe. Just saw what I said. Moshe was the most humble teacher. Right. What does it say? All aspects of spirit. Wait, here it is. A drawing out of the spiritual form of life, the lamb nature. This is what Moshe means, right? To draw out of the spiritual form of life, the lamb nature. Thus, Rav Moshe is the most humble teacher in that he is willing to abide in clay forms. So let's look at what Yahshua did to demonstrate what this humility looks like. Thank you, Shlika. Philippians, right? It says in verse five, this is Philippians two, starting at verse five, for let this mind be in you, which was also in Messiah Yehoshua, who being in the form of Elohim did not regard equality with Elohim a matter to be grasped, but emptied himself, right? Taking the form of a servant and came to be in the likeness of men. And having been found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death. Death even of, in some version reads, a tree or a stake. Yeah. Right? Most verses read about the cross. But that was a tree. But I digress from that. But this humility... This humility is what allowed for him to be obedient to our father and our king. That's what gave him the power by decreasing, right? Let me decrease, but let him increase. We hear that. We say that a lot. But do we understand that and do we exercise that? Yeah. Are we able to put ourselves aside, right, for the sake of the spirit in us? Are we allowing the spirit to predominate in our life or is our self, our ego, is that flesh ruling? Who is in control of us? That's what we have to ask ourselves. And that's what James 4 is really addressing. That's what this here is saying, right? And it's all about having the mindset of Mashiach. Do we have the mind of Messiah? Yeah, but yeah. And that's how we start to get mastery. How do you get the mind of Messiah? Transformed by renewing it. How do you do that? Study. Put this word in you. This word got to be in you. It ain't just about reading a couple of verses and thinking you got something understood. No, it's about wrestling with this word. It's about letting this word minister and speak to you so that you can understand what it's saying. It's about having the conversations and the fellowship of this word so that you develop Collective consciousness, which creates changings and paradigms. But you got to be able to rightfully divide this word. You got to be able to truly understand this word. And that's where we have our challenge. But this is something that it just resonated with me, with me, Ema. We was just talking about how, you know, we got to get in this word. And y'all's word 
is what endures. The flesh passes, but Yah's word has been here, right? Has it gone through transformation? Yes, but the essence, the spirit, the context of it, right? The intent, the message, the essence of it has yeah. remained fundamentally unchanged. Because it's about love and it's about light and it's about righteousness. When you're looking for those principles, it's about order. You start to see how the kingdom takes shape. And we have to really conceptualize what it means when it says kingdom. It is very concrete. The kingdom of heaven is a concrete principle. Yes, it is. And it's all based on the word of the king. <laughs> no opinions and so this is where these fightings come from we start to divide ourselves from the word of Yah and when we get separated from the word of Yah and we start operating in our own thoughts and that's where we get into these contentions that's where things become more contentious for us and our pride steps in and the ego swells and the spirit gets set aside We have to know the will of Yah and how to move in the will of Yah for the life, for the blessing, for the good, right? Yah promised us incredible things, but we have to be prepared to receive them. And the way that we do that is go through this transformative process of becoming Mashiach because people gain the world all the time. But guess what they end up giving up when they gain the world? What they What people give up when they gain the world? Life everlasting. Yep. And that's all. The soul. The soul. And this is why verse four is so important because it tells us that friendship with the world is enmity with Elohim. Like that is so profound. Who whoever, who therefore intends, whoever therefore intends to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of Elohim. So we have to be wise. We have to be prudent, right? We have to be shrewd in knowing how to move. And so those three things, you know, we're calling for to operate this week, to move um, in the will of Yah, you know, seeking out Yah's will, Striving to do it in everything that we do, the small, the little, you know, the big, the great. We have to walk with humility. OK, and then we resist the devil. But that requires us to discern the devil, the Satan. Right. So Satan just means adversarial things that are adversarial to the will of Yah. Anything that we encounter that is adversarial to the will of Yah is, in fact, Satan to the point that Yahshua called Kepha Satan. For speaking against the purpose of him becoming the Lamb of Elohim and being turned over to the Gentiles. In more ways than one, that's so profound. <clears throat> yes, ma'am, say loud. So those three things are what we're going to work on for this week. Again, we have to submit ourselves to the will of Yah and all things. Two, to walk with humility. And three, resist Satan. So that's that's profound. You know, uh, James 4 is very deep. Um, you know, this judgment here is so important as well. And this is requiring us to be faithful and obedient. You know, the way that we actually bring conviction and judgment to people. Well, let me ask you all, what do you think is the most effective way to bring conviction and judgment? And I will even say, if necessary, condemnation to individuals according to Torah. What's the most effective way to do something like that? 
to me is read and learn the word. Mm -hmm. Study the word. And then apply it. There you go, right there, Ima. Right there. It says, and we read this before, by belief, <laughs> Noah, by his faithfulness, this is what it means, his application of what Yah told him to do, right? Noah, having been warned of what was yet unseen, having feared, prepared an ark to save his house, through which he condemned the world. So what brings condemnation is not the judgment that we offer and us saying, you're not doing it. It's about living the life that Yah has called for us to live. Yeah. That brings all the conviction, all the condemnation, all the judgment to itself. Just be the witness. Be the letter. Live the letter. Don't just speak the letter. More importantly, live the letter. Become the word. Become Torah. And so that's how we go beyond judgment. And understand that Yah is the law given to judge, right? Yah is the one who's able to save and destroy. Now, there is judgment that we uphold one another, but we do it in righteousness. We don't do it according to sight. We do it according to righteousness. And so this verse 8 is important as well relative to what we're even speaking of now in terms of how we live according to Torah. But this draw near, korban, this is a word that means korban, right? Korban is to draw near. It's to, uh, what verse was that again? Verse 8. Korbanu, right? Korbanu. La Elohim. So these are what the offerings are called. Right? The Korbanot. When you read Leviticus 1 through 5, it's a whole trees on the sacrifices or the offerings or what draws people near to Elohim. Korbanot la Elohim. Right? Mm -hmm. So this, again, presents us as the offering. This is what Yaakov is saying or James is saying in verse 8. Be the offering. When you bring that burnt offering, that Ola offering to Yah, you lay everything down. You give the highest elevation offering you can offer. Yah has no choice but to draw near to you. But like it says, we got to leave it all at the offer, at the altar. Yeah. So these are the choices that we have to make. You know, that's how we draw near to Elohim. The more we draw near to Elohim, the more Elohim is near to us. We give him part of our life to Yah. Yah only going to give us a part as well. Man, what that? There's a, man, this is one of the toughest verses. What did it say? Oh, goodness. Mm. Deny himself is deny. So this is in Second Timothy. Okay, give me one second. One time, I'll be right back. Come on, give me a minute.
All right, Shlika. So, 2 Timothy 3.8, right? I believe that's what it is. 2 Timothy 2.13, Shlika. 2 Timothy 2.13. And this is relative, again, to drawing near to Elohim, how we are to really lay everything down at the altar. Because this is how Yah works. This is 2 Timothy 2, starting at verse 11. It says, trustworthy is the word. For if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he shall also deny us. If we are not trustworthy, he remains trustworthy. It is impossible for him to deny himself. Because what has happened is once we are trustworthy to Yah, we recreate Yah. So Yah completely is only recreating himself in us through our faithfulness to his word. Through our trustworthiness. And so he has to bring himself to himself, right? Remind them of this, earnestly witnessing before the master, not to wage verbal battles, which is useless, the overthrowing of the hearers. But this is where it says, study to show yourself approved. Do your utmost to present yourself approved to Elohim, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. This is how we draw near to Elohim. We die with him, right? We endure. We become and remain trustworthy. We are being reminded of this principle, right? We're witnessing this before the master. We're doing everything to present ourselves, approved to Elohim, studying, right? Because we do not receive shame due to the way we handle Yah's word of truth. Hallelujah. I, I, I tell you, uh, Moray, I was thinking about what, uh, when you were talking even about the being humble, I'm thinking about what he, in, in First Peter, in that fifth chapter, and he says, uh, that's in uh, verse, um, verse six. Well, actually, it starts in, uh, Verse five. Of this, uh, what chapter again? I'm sorry. Uh, it's First verse Peter? Peter five. Okay. And it starts in uh, verse five, but I like the verse six. And, okay. Um, 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 but it says, "Therefore, be humble under the mighty hand of Yah, that He may exalt you in due time." And you think about the way um, up with Yah is down. Wow. You 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 got to be to be up with him for him to be able to exalt you. You got to be down. Mm. You got to place yourself in that submissive, that that humble, that 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 down position to be able mm. to be exalted in due time. I I wow. Mm -hmm. And you know, humble is like knowing this is like, which is where we get mistaken about humility. In meekness, right? This does not mean to your neglect of your safety and protection, right? Never, never. Right? Humble and meek means you're like a, a well-trained. I'm just going to use it as a, as a, as a, as a, as a, you know, example, a horse, right? A race horse, right? The race horse is trained. It's disciplined, right? It's it's groomed for what it's going to accomplish. And when it does what it's supposed to do, it does it with beauty and with grace because it's mastered it, but it doesn't have to boast in what it, you know what I'm saying? It 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 remains humble and gives thanks and praises for what it's capable of doing. Because we realize that it's a gift, right? It's favor that we receive to give praises and esteem to the one who gave it to us. And to bring light back into this darkness. So humility is about shining the light on Yah and not on us. 
what we want to do so many times is shine a light on us. That's not humility. That's pride. And we know what comes after pride. <laughs> and so this humility is about giving Yah praises and esteem in all things. This is what even drawing near to Elohim is about. Everything is infused with Yah when we draw near to Yah. If we're giving the Ola, Korban, the elevation offering, we're putting it all on the altar, that means everything we do is for Yah. And that's putting the will of Yah before you in all that you do. That's walking with humility. That's resisting the devil. Those are our assignments. And the way that Yah prefigures in our life, right? The more, let me say this. The more that Yah prefigures in our life, the more the light of life will emanate from within us. The more the light of life will emanate from within us. The more in control, the more peace we will have, the more we will be able to operate in and with love and to overcome all situations and to receive the blessings that Yah has promised. So these are the assignments that we have. This is relative again. So we are going to serve Yah and make sure his will is done before us relates to ourself and the decisions that we make with ourselves, the decisions we make with our family and the decisions we make in the community, right? We walk in humility with ourselves. We walk in humility with our family. We walk in humility with the community, right? We resist the devil as relates to ourselves. We resist the devil as relates to our family. We resist the devil and Satan as relates to the community. Right? Those are our assignments. That's how we carry it off. I will put that in WhatsApp. I'll put it in on Facebook. So that we'll have the assignment before us because this is why we do the scriptural application workshop is so that we can apply these principles to our life. And I got to get better myself. I encourage us to journal again, journal your nights, journal your experience, write it down, um, hype it up, you know, but just make sure you're documenting this week's journey relative to these assignments and how you do so we can reflect on these, come back and reflect on it, see where you were and how you've grown over the course of your journey. Because we want to get to a place where we actually find and we make that breakthrough, man, I get it. Everything has come together by a breakthrough. Now you keep pushing towards perfection, right? Because that's the goal is to be the image and likeness of Yah. That is the goal, right? To walk humbly with the Elohim, to love and to pursue righteousness and justice, right? And to serve Yah. That's what y'all expects from us, right? That's Micah. And we're about to close out with prayer. What does y'all expect from you? I think it's fire. Chapter six, Ali. He has declared to you, O oh man, what is good? And what does Yah require of you but to do right, to love kindness, <laughs> hear that word, Ima, and to walk humbly with your Elohim? This applies to everybody. He's declared to you, O oh man, what is good? When he said, in this, and Yah said, let this, let this be there and let that be this, and, you know, after he was done creating it, he said, it is good. So this is what he's declaring is good for us because he's creating us. This is what he is doing to shape us into the image and likeness that he has called us to be. To do right, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with the Elohim. Imagine a world where more of us are doing this. Imagine that. But all it takes is one person to start to do it. Because one person 
touched 12 others, and these 13 who he touched, one fell off, they got another one. But those 13 have changed the entire world. They've changed the world by the act of one. So that's why there's one that we may have been looking for, because it's the same thing today. Where is the Mashiach today? Where is Mashiach today? Any of us can be Mashiach if we stand up and do what Mashiach is expecting to be done, or what is expected of Mashiach to be done. But it's not supposed to just be one of us. It's supposed to be all of us. <laughs> It's supposed to be all of us. That's the reality of it. We are all supposed to be fulfilling this. So, any closing thoughts before we transition? All right. I'm going to go ahead and close out with the Alenu prayer. And then we will go from there. So in the spirit of prayer, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Alenu le shabayach le adon hakol, la teik gedula la yetzer preishit, shelo asanu ke goi haritzot, ve lo samanu b'mishpachot hadama. Shalom sam hachenu kahim, ve gora le nu kokol hamonam, ve anach nu korim, u mishtakowim u modim, lifne melech melki hamalakim hakadosh boruchu, shehu no te shemayim ve yesore retsu meshov yekra ova shemayim ima al, shechina dozo bokobohai moromim, hu eloheinu einod, Emet Malkenu, Ethesolato, Kakatu Votorato, Vayarata Hayom, Veheshovota, Levavacha, Ki Yahua, Huha Elohim, Bashamai, Mima Alva, Alha, Aretz Metachat, Enod, El Kena Velacha, Yahua, Eloheinu, La Raot Maharaba Teferet Uzacha, La Habir Golalim, and Harvest for Halalim Kerot, Yekratun, Ki ha mel chut shel chahi, ule ole mi etim log bakavo, kakatuf potora techa, yahua yem log le olam vayed, vene amar, vachaya yahua le meleka kol ha aretz, vayom ha hu yihie yahua echad, ushemo echad. It is our obligation to praise the master of all, to ascribe greatness to the great creator of the world in the beginning that he has not made us like the nations of the land and has not positioned us like the families of the earth, that he has not assigned our portion like theirs, nor our lot like that of all their multitudes, but they prostrate themselves to vanity and nothingness and pray to a mighty one that cannot deliver. But we bow, prostrate ourselves and offer thanks to the Supreme, before the Supreme King of Kings, the Holy One, blessed be he, who spread the heavens and establishes the earth, and the seat of his esteem is in the heavens above, and the abode of his height, of his invincible might, is in the loftiest heights. He is our El, there is no other. And our El, our King is truth. All else is insignificant, as it is written in his Torah, and you shall know this day and take it into your heart that Yah is Elohim in the heavens above and upon the earth below. There is nothing else. We therefore put our hope in you, Yahweh, to soon behold the esteem of your might in banishing idolatry from the earth and the false mighty ones will be utterly exterminated to perfect the world as the kingdom of El Shaddai. And all mankind will invoke your name to return back to you, all the wicked of the earth. They will realize and know all the inhabitants of the world that to you every knee must bend, every tongue must swear allegiance to you. 
before you, Yah, are El, they will bow and prostrate themselves, and to the esteem of your name, give honor, and they will accept upon themselves the yoke of your kingdom, and you will reign over them soon, forever, and ever. For the kingdom is yours, and to all eternity you will reign in esteem, as it is written in your Torah, Yah will reign forever and ever. And it is said, Yah will be king over the whole earth. On that day, Yah will be one, and his name one. In Mashiach Yahoshua's name we pray, blessed be his name. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Amen and amen. All right.